Bash it up. There you go. Give it a little stir. Hmm? I'm cooking, girl. <laughs> so it should look like that. <laughs> Caesar with the Food 52 Test Kitchen, and this is where recipe drop, where myself and my friends here at the Food 52 Test Kitchen come at you with new recipes weekly. And today we're making sweet garlic pork chops with chayote something. Let's start with our pork chops. I have four pork chops bone in. Uh, they're about an inch thick, inch to an inch and a half thick. This is a super easy, simple marinade. The little secret weapon here is better than bouillon, not sponsored, um, or any bouillon paste. It's obviously very salty, but it's a quick, uh, it's a quick marinade. These are thick chops, so you, you kind of want to go a little aggressive um, since we're just doing a short uh, marinade time. Any uh, bouillon paste would work great. You could also do miso. Like this is basically doing what like miso would do. Uh, I have some minced garlic. I have some white sugar and I have some olive oil. So super simple, no mess. I like to marinate meat in resealable bags. The marinade comes into contact with the meat better. Uh, you can pop these in the dishwasher, clean them, and just like keep using them for, for meat marinating. So it's not, it's not as wasteful as it seems. Let's go in with our bouillon paste, our garlic, our sugar. Sugar's also gonna help uh, us get some really nice browning and our oil. I'm using olive oil. This is what I have. Um, you can use a neutral oil if you want, but I don't mind using the olive oil. So we have our sugar, which is sweet. We have our bouillon, which is salty. I would also like something uh, sour or acidic. Since we're doing the chayote somtom on the side, uh, that's gonna be our sour element. And it's gonna be pretty sour and pungent. So I don't want to like do, I, I want it to contrast. And this just needs like half an hour. Uh, it doesn't need a long marinade time. So I'm gonna set the meat aside. Well, I'm making a chayote salad or a chayote something. This is very much inspired by something, which is the papaya salad you'll find in like Thai restaurants. Uh, you also see it in Vietnamese food, Laotian food. I'm taking a few liberties here. This is not an authentic, uh, some thumb by any means. I'm kind of like incorporating some ingredients that are familiar to me. Um, one of them being chayote. You'll see chayote a lot in Latin American food. Uh, it's a type of squash and you can actually eat it raw. Another old school way of eating this, you would cut it in half, uh, you would scoop it out, you would stuff it with like meat and cheese and bake it, which I think I may do at some point. Uh, you'll find this in Latin American markets. It's not that hard to find. I'm basically gonna give this like a, like a julienne. The trick with this, you don't want your pieces to be too small. There are those potato peelers that also have like the julienne side, um, but I think it makes it a little too fine, and which will ultimately lead to a mushy uh, chayote salad. Take some slices. And the flavor on its own is almost, it's almost like a pear. This is a sleeper. People don't eat this enough. This is so good. So you would sack up a few slices, and then from here, just slice down. Get your matchsticks or your julienne. And that's what you want them to look like. I have a bowl of ice water, and I have some chayote already julienne earlier, so I'm just gonna throw this in here. And this is just gonna firm up uh, the chayote a bit more, make it really crisp. Really refreshing. As our chayote does its thing in the ice water, let's work on the rest of the salad. Traditionally, something like papaya salad or even carrot salad would be made in a, in a pak pak, which is a big mortar and pestle made out of wood or clay. Um, I unfortunately don't have one that big here. So I'm gonna use a metal bowl with the pestle of another um, mortar and pestle that we have here. We're gonna start with our garlic and our jalapeno. For a sumptum, you'd use Thai chilies. Uh, using a jalapeno, they're not too hot. I'm a bit of a wuss when it comes to heat, um, but they have a great flavor. So you see what's happening here. This is kind of a little Latin, Latin, Latin twists on a, on a sumptum. Optionally, you can char your jalapeno. 
I think it gives it uh, just a nice deep flavor. Totally optional, not necessary, but I'm gonna do it. Here's our garlic. So this salad's very complex. This salad is deeply savory, deeply sour. It has sweetness to it. So there's a lot going on. Like you, you take a bite of this and you're like, what, what, what? It takes like two bites to really understand what's happening. So I'm gonna grate my garlic into my bowl. If you have the, proper, uh, the properly sized um, pock pock or mortar and pestle or pilon for this, uh, you could just do it straight in the bowl. But I'm gonna use a little help from a microplane. Also just to note, as I'm working on the chayote salad, I also have a pan heating up for my pork chops and I have a preheated oven at 350. You want a pan that could go into the oven. So I'm using stainless steel because you could also use a cast iron. So for the jalapeno, jalapeno, I'm doing the whole thing. One whole jalapeno seems like a lot, but keep in mind, this is usually done with like the little tight chilies, which are way hotter than and a, and a jalapeno. You can use a serrano too, if you want it spicier. So I'm just gonna work this together a little bit. Should I call this a chayote something? Or just like chayote salad? I don't know, you're always gonna have people that's like, that's a something. And then if I call it a something, it's like, that's not a something. Listen, we've talked about the, the authenticity police here, and if, if that's you, slog out. Food is, you know, ever evolving. Oh, my rice is ready. I'm making a little side of rice. My um, garlic and my jalapeno are bashed up a little bit. Let's talk about sugar. So this is called piloncillo, also known as panela, rapadura, raspadura, depending on the country you're in. Uh, it's basically boiled down sugar cane and its juices, and then it's poured into these molds, and then you get this little pyramid of, of sugar. It's very similar to jaggery, which you'll find in East Asian food. Uh, you could also, of course, use coconut sugar or palm sugar if you have it. Uh, I think this is a little easier to find, uh, and you'll find this in uh, any Latin American market. And this has a really nice, deep, caramelly, almost molasses-y flavor. Uh, if you can't find this, uh, some light brown sugar would work great. So we're doing about, I don't know, a tablespoon? There we go. It's hard, be careful. About that much. <laughs> it's like a tablespoon or two. Chaos. Bash it up. There you go, give it a little stir. Hmm? I'm cooking, girl. <laughs> there we go. So it should look like that. <laughs> Okay, next up, I have some snap peas. Uh, in a traditional like Thai, uh, sometimes you would uh, use a, a long bean. Uh, I love snap peas, have really nice uh, sweetness to it, and they're in season right now. So now at this point, what we're doing with our, with our stuff, we're lightly, we're just bruising it. And it's really gonna like absorb everything that's going on. I have dry shrimp. These are little flavor bombs. You see them? Little tiny baby shrimp. They're very shrimpy and very salty. Uh, don't eat shrimp, don't add it. This is an optional ingredient. And the moisture uh, from the salad is gonna like rehydrate them a bit. Oh, my peanuts. Oh, here they are. So I'm adding peanuts. Um, Usually this will be just like dry roasted peanuts. Uh, man, I love a honey roasted peanut. So that's what I'm gonna add. So I'm adding half the peanuts now. It's like a heaping, heaping tablespoon. Okay, now for the, now for the funky shit. We're of course adding fish sauce. Fish sauce is such a powerful ingredient it doesn't smell great. It tastes much better than it smells. And is a non, it is a non-negotiable. You need the fish sauce. I don't want, like you. There's no omitting the fish sauce. Fish sauce in, 
get it at any Asian market. I've got some lime juice. I'm gonna do the zest and juice of my limes. Okay, in with our lime juice. We're gonna talk about another fun ingredient. This is tamarind paste. So tamarind comes in pods and it's a pulp that surrounds a seed. You can very conveniently find tamarind paste, uh, Latin American markets, East Asian markets. And tamarind itself is very sour. And as you can see, it's just the pulp. And it's just like stuck together. This is optional. If you can't find tamarind, uh, don't sweat it. It's just really nice. You could also add this to like barbecue sauces. Adds a really nice uh, tang. And keep this in the fridge, keep it wrapped up. So just breaking that up a little bit. As you saw, I, I did run my knife through the tamarind. Uh, I just didn't want the pieces to be too big. All right, next up, our chayote. So we have our chayote in our ice bath. We're just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a salad spinner to drain the excess water. Yeah, and you want these to be as dry as possible. So the ice cold water is gonna just help crisp it up. Yeah, you can also do this with herbs. If your herbs look a little sad, same thing. It'll bring it back to life. If you don't have a, a salad spinner, you could just do it, um, lay it out on some paper towels, pat it dry. All right, in with our chayote. So these are cherry tomatoes as well. Have a few that I just sliced in half. So your technique here is gonna change a little bit. We wanna slightly bruise our chayote. First, I'm just gonna kinda toss everything together. Break up those cell walls. And let the dressing really get in there. And the thing too with salads like this, you'll always get like a rough guideline in terms of a recipe, a written recipe, but this also kind of comes down to preference as well. All right, let's give it a taste. Ooh. Yeah. Yo. This is banging. So I'm gonna let it rest. And let's work on our pork chops. I did forget to add some white pepper to my pork chops. I'm just gonna do that now. No biggie. I like white pepper for something like this because it has a nice, like, interesting fermented flavor. Wait, that is crazy though. Look at it, it's just floating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Science. So we're searing two minutes per side before popping it in the oven. Give her a fat cap a little sear. If I just had the two chops, I would just go directly in the oven, but since I'm gonna do another batch of chops, just putting on a wired uh, sheet tray. All right. Our chops are seared. I put them in our preheated 350 degree oven. Uh, I'm gonna say like 10 to 12 minutes. Nice. Got my salad. You see how as it sits, it gets juicy? Man, that's the good stuff. You gotta do it like in the restaurants. You gotta pile it high. And there's our chayote salad. I'm just gonna finish it off with a few more of my sinful uh, honey roasted peanuts. Just give them a little, little crush. Listen, this is real cooking. Hit it with a little cilantro. Super roughly chopped cilantro, right on top. All right, just because um, I'm extra, we have these uh, we have these chai blossoms. 
You obviously do not need to add chive blossoms if you cannot find chive blossoms. This is something you'll find at the farmer's market if you're lucky enough. Um, just use chives. All right, we plated up our salad, get our chops. These pork chops are French, so it's when they do that to the bone. It's really pretty. Can I ask your butcher to do that for you? What are these? Are chives, I think? It's like an onion. This is like in no way part of the recipe, but if you have things to make, you know, make your food pretty, just use it. <laughs> is that enough? It's just onions. Oh, and I made rice. You can't eat something like this without rice. Paul just had surgery. He's at his desk. He can't move. He's too lazy to go get something to eat. Not lazy. He's, he's differently abled right now. Differently abled. Show your leg, Paul. <laughs> oh, wow. We weren't lying. Dude. Right, you have to taste. <laughs> I like the rice. There you go, a little sticky rice. Well, the, the salad slaw situation, super good. Bright, crunchy. I like yeah. the peanuts in there. The, was Mr. Mr. Peanut? Mr. Uh, Planner's. Uh... Mr. Planner's. <laughs> okay. The rice is super good, sticky, and I love like I mean, the whole pork chop spray, but like that bite right now with the fat cap. It's like incredible. I hope this heals your leg. Yeah, it will. I was told to get protein. So. <laughs> this is recipe drop. Like, comment, subscribe. Recipe down below. See you in a few days.